Act 2 Scene 2 Certainly, a part of me wants to run from my master Jew. The devil whispers in my ear, tempting me, saying to me, Gubbo, Lancelot Gubbo, good Lancelot, or good Gubbo, or good Lancelot Gubbo, use your legs, get going, run away. But my conscience says, no. Wait here, honest Lancelot. Wait here, honest Gubbo. Or it says, honest Lancelot Gubbo, don't you dare run away. Well, the bold devil is encouraging me to get going. Go! Go away, says the devil. For heaven's sake, be brave and run, says the devil. But then my conscience pulls on my heart and says very wisely to me. My honest friend Lancelot, since you are the son of an honest man, or rather the son of an honest woman. For actually my father was somewhat dishonest and unfaithful. He had a kind of taste for it. Anyways, my conscience says, Lancelot, don't budge. But budge, says the devil. Don't budge, says my conscience. Conscience, I say, you give good advice. And devil, I say, you give good advice too. If I listened to my conscience, I'd stay here with my master the Jew, who is a kind of devil himself. And if I run away from the Jew I'd be listening to the devil, who is the devil himself. But then again, the Jew is certainly the very devil incarnate. And my conscience is being rather difficult in advising me to stay with the Jew. The devil is giving more friendly advice. I will run away devil. My feet are at your command, I will run away. Excuse me young man, where is the Jew's house? Oh God, this is my father. He is as blind as a bat and doesn't recognize me. I'll play some tricks on him. Young man, please, where's the Jew's house? At the next intersection, take a right, and then at the next take a left. And then at the next intersection keep going straight and you'll be at the Jew's house. By God, it will be hard to find my way there. Do you know if someone named Lancelot is there with him or not? Are you talking about young master Lancelot? Not a master, sir but a poor man's son. His father, though, is an honest, if very poor man and thank God in good health. Well, whatever his father is like. We are talking about young Master Lancelot. Yes, but just Lancelot, not Master, sir. But I ask you, Ergo, old man, I beseech you, are you talking about young Master Lancelot? Master, I am speaking of someone simply called Lancelot. Ergo, Master Lancelot. Don't talk about Master Lancelot, father. That young gentleman, according to his fate and destiny and so forth, the three sisters and so on, is deceased. Or, to say it plainly, he has gone to heaven. God forbid. In my old age I relied on that boy, just like a crutch. Do I look like a crutch, or a prop? Do you recognize me, father? I swear, I don't know who you are, young gentleman. But please tell me. Is my son God rest his soul alive or dead? Do you not know who I am, father? Alas, sir, I am completely blind. I don't know you. Even if you could see, you might not recognize me. It takes a wise father to recognize his own child. Well, old man, I will give you news regarding your son. Give me your blessing. The truth will come to light. Murder can't be hidden for long. A man's son can be hidden, but not the truth. Please sir stand up. I am sure you aren't my son Lancelot. Please, enough fooling around. Give me your blessing. I am Lancelot, who was, is, and will continue to be your son. I can't believe that you are my son. I don't know what to think of that. But I really am Lancelot, the Jew servant, and I am sure your wife Marjorie is my mother. My wife's name is Marjorie, indeed. If you're Lancelot, I'll swear you are my own flesh and blood. Good Lord, what a beard you have. You have more hair on your chin than my horse Dobbin has on his tail. It would seem that Dobbin's tail is shrinking then. I am sure that he had more hair on his tail the last time I saw him than I have on my face. Lord, you have changed. How are you and your master getting along? I have bought him a present. Are you getting along with him? Pretty well, but I've decided to run away from him, so I won't rest until I've run some distance. My master is very much a Jew. Go ahead and give him a present. Give him a noose. I work as his servant and he hardly feeds me. You can count my ribs, 
they protrude so much. I'm glad you've come, Father. Give me the present so I can give it to Master Bassanio, who gives his servants fancy new outfits. If I don't end up as his servant I will run as far away as is possible. Oh, just my luck. Here he comes. Let's go talk to him father, for if I serve the Jew any longer, I'll be a Jew myself. You may do that, but do it quick so that supper is ready by 5 o'clock at the latest. Make sure these letters are delivered, get the outfits made and tell Graziano to come soon to my house. Go talk to him father. God bless you. Thanks. Do you want something? This here is my son, a poor boy. Not a poor boy sir, but a servant of the rich Jew. And I would like sir, as my father will tell you. He has a great desire sir, as they say, to serve. Yes, to make a long story short, I currently serve under the Jew and, as my father will tell you, I have a desire. He and his master, your reverence, are not the closest of friends. To be brief, the truth is that the Jew, having wronged me, now makes it so that I, as my father being an old man, will provide you with. I have a gift of a plate of doves here that I would give to you, and all I ask is. In short, the request is about me, and you will learn from this honest old man, and even though I am his son, I tell you, even though he's old and poor, my father. One of you speak for both of you. What do you want? To be your servant, sir. That is the heart of the matter, sir. I know you well. You will get what you ask for. Your master Shylock spoke with me today and spoke well of you, if you really want to leave the service of a rich Jew to become a servant of such a poor gentleman. The old proverb says, the grace of God is enough. It could be split up between you and my master Shylock, sir. You have the grace of God, and he has enough. He speaks well. Go along with your son, father. Go leave your old master and come inquire at my house. Give him an outfit more frilled than his fellow servants. Make sure this is done. Father, go. I can't get a job. I'm not very good at talking. Well, I have as good a palm as any man in Italy to swear upon a Bible with. I will have good luck. Look, here is the lifeline. It predicts several wives. Fifteen wives is nothing. Eleven widows and nine young women is good for one man. It looks like I will escape drowning three times and nearly lose my life in a feather bed. Simple escapes. If Fortune is a lady, she's a good one for all this. Come with me, father. I'll leave the Jew in the blink of an eye. Please Leonardo, pay attention to this. Buy and arrange these things and then come back to me quickly, for I'm having my most respected acquaintance over for dinner tonight. Get going now. I'll give it my best effort. Where is your master? Over there, sir, walking about. Sir Bassanio. Retiano. I have a favor to ask of you. Your wish is my command. Please don't deny my favor. I must go with you to Belmont. Well then, you will. But listen, Retiano. You are too wild and too rude, and you speak too boldly. These qualities suit you well and I don't mind them. But in a place where people don't know you, these qualities might seem excessive. Please take care to moderate your hot-headed spirit with some cold drops of modesty, so that your wild behavior doesn't reflect poorly on me in Belmont, and ruin my own hopes there. Sir Bassanio, listen to me. I give you permission to never trust me again if I do not behave in a sober fashion, talk respectfully and not swear too much, carry prayer books around with me, look modestly. Even more, if during grace I do not pull my hat down over my eyes, sigh, and say amen, if I don't follow every guideline of good manners like someone who's studied hard to please his grandmother. Well, we will see how you behave. But tonight is an exception. Don't gauge me based on what I do tonight. No, it would be a pity to judge you based on tonight. Rather, I encourage you to, to put on your boldest display of merriment, for we are entertaining two friends whom I want to entertain. But I must say goodbye, because I have some business to take care of. And I must go to Lorenzo and the others. We will see you at dinner time.
If you enjoyed the video, please make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon.